you know, I was at, I, I was at the weigh in. It was um, like I said, I was at the weigh in. It's a lot of great shows that they get ready to start bringing to, uh, you know, Washington D.C. Get a lot of fights. Um, it was it was, it was great, but just to see a guy that you know been through the ups and downs of the game already, and getting ready to defend this title uh, in Washington D.C. You no. Know, when he came in the ring, when he came in the ring at one forty point five, um, to me, what I seen was that he had no intentions on making the weight because, you know, when he's one forty point five, he's cleaning out drinking TV like. Mm-hmm. So I don't think um, he's going to even work to make the weight, or or, or he already said right in the day he wasn't going to do it. Uh, let's keep in mind he's an hour late for the weight. I guess he's still working out trying to make the weight. But as a fighter, as a trainer, as a champion, you know, you know what you wait before you get to that scale. You check that weight before you get to that scale. And what I seen today was a depleted, drained Adrian Peterson, I mean Adrian Garner, walking through the scale and leaving the scale. I seen a I seen a guy that had no energy. I seen a guy that was just drained. Do you think that has the makings of an upset, man? Um, or do you think he's still talented enough, given all the circumstances of, you know, his crazy week, his legal problems, and now, of course, the weigh-ins? Do you think he has the talent to still pull it off? I think he still have enough skills. I think probably he's going to out box out of it. Um, I think he's still have enough skills. I think he's still have enough skills. But I know it's getting... Um, it's getting actually a lot more excited, a lot more hype, a lot more pump. Um, because when I seen Ashley doing his last interview, you know, he said it. He said this guy he looks stressed, he look uh, he looked beat up, he always looked like he lost. So whatever Ashley thought that he didn't have, now he's walking around that saying, Look, you know, I know I can beat him in the beginning, but now he's saying looking at him saying, I know I'm gonna beat him. Mm-hmm. So the late the time just the word and just switched. And he looked at Adrian and did the interview and he said, All right, he got come an hour later. He's in there trying to make weight. Then when he come in here, he's still one forty point five and it's like nobody can control him. You've been obviously a Hall of Fame fighter. You've been around the sport for a long time. With with the tumultuous tumultuous week that Adrian Broner's had and, and like you say, missing weight on the scale. Does this have the makings of an upset to you? Like, does this feel like something can happen tomorrow night that, you know, possibly people didn't expect? Yes, yes, I feel like, yes, um, this has all the makings of an upset. Um, you know, Miss Wait had to go out of town, to, I guess, turn itself in, had to fly back to D.C., um, had to go to a press conference, had to go to this, had to go to that. Now we have to wait in just really three days after, you know, going to Cincinnati, make weight. So, right then and there, show me that you didn't get the proper running, the proper training, the proper sleep in those last couple of days, which can be which can be huge, which can be big. And, uh, you know, you're worrying about everything else except for Asia Brown, the title fight, other than, you know, what do you want to say about Ashley, what you want to say about Floyd Mayweather, what you want to say about this person. Say what you want to say about Floyd Mayweather. Floyd always came to the ring to the scale on weight. Never had a problem. Mm-hmm. If he killed himself in the gym, that's what he did. But he came to the gym as a professional, made his weight, and went on about his way. Say so what you want to say about Floyd Mayweather as far as whatever he did within his private life. And he came to the ring. He came to the ring every time you seen him. He was 100% ready. 100% prepared. Um, I know how it feels to make weight. I know how I feel to not be. I know how I feel not to get you for three, four days. Cause I, I done it. I did it before. And up until my later fight um, against the guys like Johnny Gonzalez and, and um, uh, you know, um, those big guys like that make them wait. As I got older, it was, it was hard. It, it was hard walking around at, you know, 145, 146 and getting down to 118 because at this time, I'm a, I'm a man. I'm a grown man. Yeah. Um, metabolism has slowed down. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm in here. I didn't get the right fights I want. So, you know, I'm kind of going through the motions with these fights. And that's what things to do. 
Adrian Barnum might have already overlooked Ashley Delphine. He might have already said, hey, well, this is what this is going to be. Because one thing that you know as a trainer, as a fighter, check that weight before you go out there. So you know what you weigh before you win this. Mm-hmm. Do you see this as a, uh, a guy that's outgrown 140, or do you see this as an effort thing and why he's not make, making the weight or made the weight? You know, I think it may, I think it may be a guy that outgrown it. Um, I think he might have outgrown uh, 140, but at 147, he's just not that strong. He's not that controlling. And at 147, he, you know, he got all the big guns up there. Um, and, and he might have, um, he might have uh, so outgrown it. But who's to say because I, I wasn't in camp with him. Mm-hmm. I don't know, you know, what he was doing at camp. I don't know what he came in camp waiting. I don't know, you know, how his training camp was. So, to me, I, I think he outweighed it. But who's to say if he had a nutritionist in the camp? Who's to say if he had somebody that can, that can cook for him in the camp? Once again, do he listen to anybody that can motivate him on doing it the right thing? Because mm-hmm. we've seen a lot of fighters go through stuff like this, but they had the right people in the camp that, that they could listen to that would make them go to the next level. At this point right now, I don't see nobody in the camp like that. So you... It, uh, it, it, it's Broner's camp. Nobody else can. Uh-huh. What, what's your final thoughts on Adrian Broner uh, leading, going into this fight tomorrow? If you just had to, I guess, describe him or in your opinion, what's your thoughts on Adrian Broner as a fighter? I'll say, I'll say a very talented guy. A great boxer. Well, not great, but a good boxer. Mm-hmm. who has been able to win world title fights. A guy that's also been able to, um, you know, make, make, a, make his opponent look bad. Um, and it's a guy that after this fight, win or lose, this gonna this gonna let him know if he really want to do this, if he serves, if he not serves, and it's not about the money after the fight. It's not about the playing around after the fight. That's your that's the that's your personal life. Let's talk about what's gonna happen. And I think this this is a big this is a big stepping stone for him because hey, you know with everything that's going on now, if he lose to Ashley, hey, come on now. Just, you're the joke. You're the joke. You're the joke of boxing. 